Well, thanks for agreeing to talk with Polish and Angelina. Um, you'll have a show at the gallery in July with a show opening July 1st. How are you feeling about it? I'm I'm pretty excited. Um, it's my first show, so it's it's very, very exciting. Um, yeah, I'm I'm really, really excited about it. So thank you for this opportunity. Yeah, we're excited for it too. Um and we're excited to sit down with you and do a sit down with coalition. So this interview, um, let's get into some of the questions. So can you tell me a bit about yourself, kind of where you are and what you do now? Yeah, so um, I've been an art teacher for in the public schools for about 20 years. Um, and it taught through COVID, that was, that was something else. And um, about a year ago, I uh, I started learning about this process of art called intentional creativity, and it kind of combines uh, spirituality with art, and that's like totally my thing. Um, so it, it's it's a it's a process. It's a kind of me medicine art, and it's um, it's very healing. I've found um so the the works that I've done are kind of a documentation of my healing journey really um and yeah I I, I my teacher's name is Shiloh Sophia and um I am just finishing up the color of women teaching certification through her program and uh so I'll be able to teach workshops to people to uh learn this beautiful, amazing, wonderful way of creating art that's just really been um, extremely valuable to me in my life. And uh, yeah, I look forward to bringing it to other people as well. And I hope that people like my art too. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. But... Yeah, from what I've seen, it's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your art medium? Yes. Um, so I like to use fluid acrylics. Um, so they're they're very flowy, almost like watercolors. And I work in layers. So there's lots of layers of information. And the layer before informs the layer after and so on and so on. And it builds. I'm actually going to try to do a couple of... Um, videos that show my process I have I have one for for one of them although I got some feedback that's not very good but it was my first one so <laughs> room for growth um so yeah it shows like the layers of paint and um all the layers of meaning like inside the paint that's not it's not always visible the end result um with with my work it, it's 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 it feels like playing like you know like when you're a little kid and you're playing with dolls or whatever and you're making up a story as you go along it kind of feels like that like like just each layer is like a, a a story that you're going through you know about your life or you know whatever these little dolls are doing I don't know it's it's um it's really cool it's really fun my inner child's happy. <laughs> it sounds like it. That's great that you're able to nurture your inner child. Um, how did you get into making art and becoming an artist? Um, well, I just kind of always was. I I was encouraged as a child to, you know, do little crafty projects and stuff. And um, so it's just always been there um and yeah when I was 15 years old I used to teach ceramics classes to like my neighbors out of my parents garage so I always had that like kind of teaching piece also kind of um I guess born with it or something at least at a young age was um interested in doing that um so yeah, it's it's um 
Yeah. <laughs> I think I answered your question. <laughs> you did. Yeah. It's really cool. You've always been an artist. Always. Yeah. Yeah. And my, my mom always encouraged me. She gave, she put me in art classes and my grandmother always encouraged me. Um, they were both always just putting me in art classes and, um, making art with me. And I remember when I was little, my like elementary school age, my mom would actually come in and into my classroom and teach art classes to to the to the kids there just you know PTA mom coming in to teach art classes so and it's funny because that's what I do for a living now (laughs) yeah that's really neat um so I'm curious what your favorite time of day is to create art oh um all day every day all the time anytime um (laughs) I like when I'm like in a painting, it's like happening all around me all the time. Like, like I feel like it's it's almost meditative the way that I paint. And so I'm in this different kind of headspace about it. So when I, I'm like in the middle of a painting, I'm pretty much always working on it. Like it's just happening, you know, inside my head and around me. Um, and so so when I'm doing that I can't really get out of it until it's finished (laughs) um and yeah so all day every day whenever possible um right now since I do have a you know my teaching job during the day I I usually come home and I try to paint for at least an hour uh every day sometimes that doesn't happen you know things come up (laughs) mom things and other things and um yeah it it doesn't always happen um and then I try to save some time on the weekends I like it when I can really get on a roll with it you know like have hours like a whole day or whatever to just sit and work on a painting that's my favorite but it doesn't happen very often so (laughs) Yeah, that makes sense. So you talked about how the art or the piece that you're working on kind of goes into, it's around you all day. Do you take really that into well. your teaching at all? Um, Into my teaching? Um, definitely when I'm teaching a workshop about the painting. Um, my, my, uh, job at the public school though I don't know I don't know that I do it very very much um I don't do it very much there I mean I always have to a little bit because it's always just kind of in my in my headspace um but it's it's a little more uh, what's the word I don't I want to look like a big weirdo in front of my students how's that <laughs> No, that makes sense. Maybe you're normal, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's go to the next question. So, Angelina, why do you think art is important to society? So, I think that art is culture. It's music. It's drama. It's visual art. It's you know, even like commercials that you see is everything, um, and it informs us of who we are as a society. Um, you either like that or you don't like it or you like certain things about it, you know. Um, and it's it's what we all care the most about, really, you know. Um, this uh, it's, it's like a, a reflection of of the society. Um, and yeah, it's it's it is like the students that I teach, the way that I teach art to them um it's called tab teaching for artistic behavior and it's it's not about me like showing them how to draw the perfect sunflower that's not what it's about for me it's about them harnessing their own creativity their own voice inside 
Um, and a lot of what comes out is, um, you know, things from the culture that they are into. So like right now, my little students, it's, um, they really like Roblox. Roblox comes out a lot. And, uh, you know, what are they? The, the color friends, the rainbow friends, I think they're called. Um, so that like I see all these things and I don't have little kids but I know all about them because they're you know that's what they're into and that's what's coming out so art is life it's everything around us it's those little weird characters that the kids like and you know everything yeah so what role would you like your art to play in society 10 years from now <laughs> so um, my art is um, based in the, the feminine, this kind of feminine energy um, that's been kind of minimized, uh, you know, throughout history um, with the patriarchy and toxic masculinity. Um, and so my my role is to gently bring forth these images, these like sacred feminine beings, um, and to gently and subtly push society toward the acceptance of this role. It's an important role, and it's it, it's um, worthy of reverence, and it's 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 been you know, like I said, minimized. Uh, throughout history and I, I feel like it's through through the how do I say that using feminine energy to this you know what I'm talking about it's like an energy it's not like being a girl or whatever it's like um more of a yin type of an energy where it's 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 subtle it's not pushy it's not in your face it's not um hey look at me it, it's it's more like here I am you know and I'm offering this and you can take it or leave it you know it's it's more of that kind of subtle um energy that's that's create that's meant to create this a balance I guess like in our society um Yeah, I'm curious if you can speak a little bit more to that balance. Like, what are you hoping to balance out? Um, just this. It's it's so hard to explain. Sorry. It's um. So we live in a society that's very. Um. You, you know, driven by the that yang energy. The do it, the go get it, the, um, you know, that forceful kind of like pushiness. And that's more of a, a doing energy. Um, and that's considered more of a masculine energy. Um, so what I'm talking about with this art is more of the being energy, the, um, the, the opposing side, the, the more feminine qualities um, that are subtle and um, nurturing, I guess, um, the qualities that we don't necessarily, um, why well, I have felt in my life that, that those qualities aren't as um, not respected, but I guess honored, like they're, they're not as, they're not seen as important as, you know, those doing, those going, like get the A's, you know, like do the, the thing, be an achiever, you know, like, like that drive, it, it, the being part doesn't seem as important. So um, through these images, I hope to show that side a little bit more the feminine qualities um and just that that's important too 
you know, and we've had this imbalance for so long. Um, maybe it can offer some kind of balance to that. I don't know. <laughs> no, that totally makes sense. And it makes me super excited to see you at, at the gallery in July. Good. Think about that as I'm taking it. Yeah. yeah. So switching gears a little bit, I'm curious, what role does the price of your art play in your artwork? Yeah, so that's hard. Because um, I'm very new to this. So pricing art, I had to I had to look that up. And, and as I was doing that, I was reflecting on how do you put a price on a child? I don't, <laughs> they're like all my 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 babies a little bit, and I I love them all, you know. Um, so I'm gonna do the the formula that I found online, um, and the larger ones are a little pricey, but um, I figure if somebody loves that art piece as much as I do, then um, I want them to have it, you know, for, for the price that I'm putting on it, you know, so yeah, that's, that's the hardest part. I do have prints available though. So prints available online <laughs> of all of my, at least my bigger pieces. So okay. it's but... good to know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'll make sure after the interview to get your information from me so we can like link stuff when we post. Oh, excellent. Okay. Yeah. And it's all on my website too. Um, the links for that. So yeah. Awesome. All right. So next question, if you could ask any artist dead or alive, who would you ask? And what one question would you ask? Okay, so this this might seem very weird, but um, <laughs> so um, I teach this bracelet making technique to my students, and it's called um, kumihimo bracelet or kumihimo braiding, and it's a uh, this ancient kind of lost form of braiding um, that they did in Japan. Like the samurai soldiers would wear these um, cords made um for their armor and the it was they were actually made by buddhist monks and they were made as a form of meditation so i suppose what i would want to do is go back in time <laughs> and ask one of these buddhist monks like teach me this meditation technique like how is this done as a form of meditation because it's um, very intriguing to me and I just thought of this because I was teaching this to my students not too long ago so <laughs> yeah yeah so that so understanding the meditation and the art at the same time yeah, kind of my thing it's <laughs> that makes sense that would be really cool to learn yeah yeah well even when I was doing these on like the little things that we use the little looms I was like trying to like, you know, practice meditation while I was doing it, putting an intention into each like movement, um, just imagining like, maybe this is how the monks do it, you know, <laughs> like, um, so yeah, that was, that was a very intriguing idea to me. Yeah. So what famous artist would you not take advice from and why? So that was hard for me. Um, because I think all advice, even the bad advice is valuable, you know, um, every perspective is valuable. And I'm a person that, um, spend a, a lot of years, you know, silencing my own voice and, um, not having opinions and, um, not even like knowing what my own needs were. So I would take anyone's advice you know it doesn't mean I have to follow it but I would listen to it um try to understand it as best that I could so yeah I don't I don't think I would like 
I don't think I would um, say that I wouldn't take anyone's advice. I, w- I would listen to any voice that wanted to speak to me about whatever, and then just take it with inside my own self and see what resonates and what does not. And yeah, like I said, even bad advice has its own um, value. Yeah, that sounds like a really strong skill to be able to listen to everybody and kind of filter out what what's not helpful to you specifically. And what I, I really like that. <laughs> All right. So, Angelina, what is your definition of a masterpiece? So, masterpiece. Um, I was thinking about this too because I I think too much about stuff, and I was thinking. So what does it mean to be a master at something? And can you actually ever really master something, you know? Because my kindergartners, you know, they master certain things like using scissors, you know? Um, so it's out, I figured out it's, it's outstanding artistry. Um, and that, I guess, because my background as an elementary school teacher Um, that is the best you can do at the level that you are at. So, like I said, my example, the kindergartners with their cutting abilities, you know, you'd be surprised. (laughs) Yeah, no, that makes sense. So each person can create a masterpiece just at the top of their ability. That is the top of their ability and they've mastered that, whatever that is cutting skills or you know tape cutting you'd be surprised the things I have to teach stapling (laughs) I remember learning those things when I was young too like we take them for granted as adults right we don't remember and these kids they don't have a lot of access to those kind of things you know they I don't know if their parents think they're going to get hurt or you know something but they're excited to use a stapler boy I'll tell you what the first <laughs> the first time it's like wow you know <laughs> the coolest thing ever lots of staples in one piece of paper yeah I've seen that plenty but you know that's they're mastering it so <laughs> you can't do that without practice <laughs> yeah yeah that's really cool um so we're wrapping up And I'm curious for our last question. How did you hear about Coalition Art Gallery? Um, So actually I heard about it through my yoga instructor. Um, My yoga instructor, Sarah Roberts, she, um, she's, she's an amazing person. And um, we became friends and um, turns out her partner's brother owns this gallery. So I checked it out online and the mission resonated with me and, um, I contacted, um, I contacted them and, um, here I am today. So yeah, quite the journey. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, that's quite, that's an interesting connection there. Like yeah, several people removed, but, or that's really cool that you were able to find it. And again, we're super excited to have you.
And I really appreciated the interview and your willingness to kind of come on with me and spend some of your time. I think the timing worked out really well that you had this morning, not when we were able to connect. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for inviting me. It was, um, I'm super excited. I'm just, yeah, <laughs> very excited. Good. Um, so I won't be at the opening in July, unfortunately, so I won't get to meet you in person, oh, but, <laughs> but I'll definitely see your art there. Um, Great. Yeah. And I'll email you follow up with kind of what we're doing with the video and you said all of the links to your stuff are in your website. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if maybe at a bio has that, but I don't think I've seen it. Um, what's the, how can I find your website? Um, it's, it's forgottenwingsart.com. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I feel like, I'm, like I said, I'm going to be adding a couple more, um, maybe today, but throughout the week for sure. Okay. Um, so it should, it should be pretty updated as far as, you know, at least all my big, my big stuff. Okay, cool. And I, I thought I had another question, but it's escaping me now. Um, if it's important, I'll send you an email. Okay, sounds good. All right. Well, thank you. That worked out perfectly on time. I'm super excited that, yeah, we got through all of the questions and you had enough time to kind of delve in a little bit. Yeah, I hope it made sense. I did. I did. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> sometimes it's sometimes it's hard for me to find the right words to explain what I'm thinking. You know what I mean? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's interesting because I think art is so different for each person too. So I really enjoy getting to hear your perspective. Well, thank you again for this. I appreciate it. Of course. Yeah. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye.